Um, hello um, and welcome to my paper on literary prize culture and paratexts. Um, thank you firstly to the BSA for this opportunity to speak. Um, and I just want to make a few brief comments to introduce myself. Um, I'm a UK based academic uh, and to date I have worked primarily on Palestinian literature and Arab Anglophone writing. And this paper is part of my new project on contemporary Arab writing in the literary marketplace. Um, I've not worked extensively with bibliographical material before, but in a former life I worked in uh, commercial publishing here in London, and this new project is in part an attempt to finally bring together my current life as an academic with my previous life as an editor. So my focus for this paper is the Palestinian author and human rights lawyer Raja Shahade, and in particular his most well known work Palestinian Walks which was first published in 2007 and won the prestigious Orwell Prize in 2008. The memoir is an exploration of the impact the Israeli occupation has had on the Palestinian landscape, structured around a series of walks that Shahade takes throughout the West Bank over a 27 year period, which allow him to present the beauty of his homeland alongside his ever increasing lack of access to the hilltops he is accustomed to walking amongst given the rapid expansion since the 1980s of Israeli settlements. Shahade is now one of the most prominent and well-received Palestinian writers in the Anglophone context. His success subsequent to winning the Orwell Prize is a clear indication of the prize's impact on his career and status, something he himself readily acknowledges in interviews. Since 2008, he has published prolifically, continuing to produce works of life writing in English, now numbering 10 in total, that center on his personal experience of life under occupation. Despite, or perhaps because of the subject matter, Shahade strives to be accessible, writing with a clear awareness of his non-Palestinian audience, along with its relative lack of knowledge and frequent misconceptions of Palestine. He has remained with the same well-established independent UK publisher, Profile Books, and secured publication for each of his titles in the US. He also publishes regular op-eds on Palestine for mainstream news organizations such as The Guardian and The New York Times, both of whom, the latter in particular, very rarely publish Palestinian voices. His status and role as a spokesperson on Palestine for metropolitan readers, reminiscent of the prominent role played by Edward Said in this respect until his death in 2003, is what interests me in Shahade, especially from a bibliographical perspective. I want to argue that a burden is placed on Palestinian and other Arab authors who achieve any measure of success, something we can trace in Shahade's case through scrutinizing the reception of his work. A key starting point for me has been Gillian, Lip Gillian Whitlock's work, in particular Soft Weapons, which offers an important reminder of the vulnerability of Arab life writing as it reaches metropolitan readers. Whitlock argues that such texts can do important work in generating cross-cultural engagement and humanizing categories of people whose lived experience is frequently overlooked or misunderstood. But they can also be co-opted and made to serve particular visions of Arabs in the Middle East that are limiting and problematic. When considering the reception of Shahade's work, my focus is on paratextual material and in particular review coverage which I argue functions as an influential form of framing that shapes responses to Shahade's texts, which in turn both reveal and generate wider metropolitan perceptions of Palestine and the Middle East. In defining paratext, Gerard Jeannette remarks that, rather than with a limit or a sealed frontier, we are dealing with a threshold, a zone not just of transition, but of transaction. Quoting from the influential scholar of autobiography, Philippe Lejeune, for Jeannette, the paratext is the fringe of the printed text, which in reality controls the whole reading. It is these ideas of thresholds and transactions, and in particular of control, that inform my reading of Shahade's autobiographical work. Established in 1993, the Orwell Prize is a prestigious UK prize for political writing. Run by the Orwell Foundation, it awards work which has been deemed as coming closest to George Orwell's ambition to make political writing into art. This ambition is directly echoed in the statement given by Jean Seaton, a high profile media historian and chair of the Orwell Committee, 
When awarding the 2008 prize to Shahade, you can see her statement here alongside other commentary related to Shahade's prize win. This celebration of aesthetics and politics is on the whole refreshing, especially in the context of Arab literary writing, which is routinely viewed by Anglophone publishers through a socio-political lens that problematically renders aesthetic qualities secondary. In general, when assessing the paratextual material related to Shahade's work, this is not the central problem. He is often praised for the quality of his writing and its artfulness, in stark contrast to many other Arab writers, a problem that becomes particularly apparent when examining fiction, which is invariably presented in ethnographic terms as opposed to creative ones. Instead, what I think is significant about the kinds of statements you can see here is their focus on the emotional qualities that Shahade is seen to embody, thus indicating that he is not being judged primarily on the strength of his ideas or his politics, but on tone and delivery and in particular, his ability to moderate and control them. Reiterated references to his stoicism and his temper, as well as the decision to foreground Shahade's supposed attentiveness to the impact of military occupation on those who are complicit in it. When Palestinian walks is a narrative that overwhelmingly addresses Palestinian loss and suffering, is indicative of the need to render his politics somewhat abstract. This presentation of Shahade deliberately places him outside factional politics and the rancor of a long-standing conflict that is continually embroiled in accusations of partisanship and intolerance. It encapsulates the way Palestinian writers are routinely presented in emotional terms as opposed to political ones, betraying a metropolitan anxiety around how to handle the realities of their subjugation. It also arguably reveals pre-existing expectations of Arab writing and even Arabs themselves. Shahade is being measured up favorably against a common orientalist trope of the overly emotional, hot-headed and aggressive Arab man. The Orwell Prize therefore helps establish a mode of talking about Shahade one that is already emerging prior to the success of Palestinian walks, but which becomes a lot more apparent and significant afterwards, given his popularity and the platform he has been accorded. What is evident from this paratextual material used to package and promote Shahade's text, primarily reviews and other press coverage, is a specific vocabulary, one that praises him for supposedly exemplifying a suitable emotional perspective and a suitable mode of behavior his pain and anger can be distilled, or if he must be angry, he's also gentle. His political passion is understated, and while he is resolute, he is also realistic, as well as able to endure immense hardship with dignity. In other words, strong emotions are appropriately tempered and mitigated. It is also interesting to note that the Guardian quotation shown here is not a review of Shahade's book, which is how it appears, but in fact taken from a news report about the Orwell Prize and specifically the judges' perspective on Shahade, which misleadingly is now absent from this quotation. And if I return briefly to the previous slide, you can see the um, original quotation as it appeared in the news report. This is a quotation uh, which comes up repeatedly in paratextual material for Shahade's various publications, therefore implicitly perpetuating the perspective of the Orwell Prize Committee. This mode of talking about Shahade is also evident if we examine paratextual material from other publications, primarily ones subsequent to Palestinian walks, which I want to highlight as well, in order to draw attention to the clear prevalence of this kind of language, which demonstrates a consistency in terms of how Shahade's work is presented. These paratexts re reiterate what I've already noted. The focus remains on his measured tone and delivery and his ability to, to restrain his articulation of loss. There is also a disquieting and problematic dismissal of Shahade's membership of the Palestinian polity, and in particular, as one of many Palestinians struggling under military occupation. 
Shahade is routinely presented as an exceptional, unique individual. He delivers a rare tale of principle. He provides rare historical insight. He offers a rare gift in the context of narratives about the conflict. This exceptionalism is also communicated through assertions that he has unusual compassion, that no one else writes about Palestinian life like he does, that few Palestinians are able to achieve his level of frankness. Extrapolating from this, we are left with an image of Shahade as committed to a lonely, noble defeat, which can then explain the clear pessimism and anger contained within the text without the Anglophone publishing industry and its metropolitan readers necessarily having to address the precise political reasons for them. Through this framing, Shahade is above all a lone voice, a singular Palestinian who no matter how skilled or wise is never going to be able to change an entrenched status quo. Firstly, because the Israeli side is also intransigent and perpetuates an unjust military occupation. This is certainly acknowledged in a good deal of the paratextual material, if not enough of it. And secondly, because there are not enough Palestinians like Shahade. Because the logical and insidious conclusion one has to draw from the presentation of Shahade as exceptional and dignified wise, humane, honest, and principled, is that other Palestinians do not embody these qualities. In the context of an unresolved conflict, it implies that a significant obstacle to peace is the inherent nature of Palestinians themselves, which again is an avoidance of the larger issues, such as the land theft that Shahade narrates across the breadth of his work, and the mass displacement of Palestinians and depopulation of their villages during the 1948 war. Shahade's recognition by the Orwell Prize amplifies the sense of the unique, exceptional individual. To win a prize is to be very explicitly singled out, meaning that to a certain extent, Shahade's achievement creates a model of success that other Arab and Palestinian authors cannot easily ignore, given how rarely such writers achieve either commercial or critical success especially in terms of literary prizes. The fact that the prize is named after an individual also underlines this. The Orwell Prize seeks out writers in the mold of an exceptional individual, writers who embody the values and characteristics of George Orwell as recognized by the Orwell Foundation. This also speaks to the institutionalization of an individual through which they are made to serve certain ideas and values and fit within the parameters deemed important by those who have influence in the literary marketplace, in this case by the gatekeepers of prize culture. In conclusion, it is no accident that the best known Palestinian author currently is a figure like Shahade. On the one hand, a proper reading of his work demonstrates that there is a real resistance to the problematic ways in which the work is framed. His anger is often precise and unmediated, and his narration of the intense gloominess, debilitating disillusionment, and suicidal thoughts precipitated by the Oslo peace process initiated in the early 1990s refute assertions of his stoicism and understated politics. He also firmly locates himself within a supportive network of Palestinians struggling collectively against Israeli rule even while being fiercely critical of the failures within Palestinian society to address the problems it faces. A critique not unique to Shahade's work, but in fact found in much Palestinian writing, both in Arabic and English. Yet on the other hand, he is also a convenient figure through which to articulate a more limited and even misrepresentative articulation of Palestine and Arab lives bringing to mind Whitlock's assertion that, I quote, life narratives from the Middle East are constantly caught up in circuits of self-construction where Islam is objectified as the obverse of Euro-American societies that self-identify as the West, driving a constant creation and recreation of imaginary boundaries between we and others. In many ways, Shahade comes across as someone who, who comfortably navigates these boundaries without always challenging them. 
for example, in his elite Christian family background, his law school education in London, his decision to write in English, as well as, as, well as his professed preference for it as a literary language, and his affirmation of principles of secularism and humanism, as well as critiques of excessive religiosity. In so doing, Shahade can represent the sort of Palestinian and Arab who is more palatable to a metropolitan readership. Someone who, with his dignity and grace, his eloquence and his passion for English literature and Western classical music is somewhat like themselves. <laughs> 